Kenya's record-breaking road is being built in the middle of the country's capital. This is precision work at an elevation of more than seven meters. The old infrastructure is being taken out of commission. It has been foretold that the new road will be a game changer for Kenya's administrative center and economic hub. The only overpass which will be in the, in the entire region. Beams have been placed with precision, proper coordination, between site workers is needed for that to happen. They have to bring the concrete component into perfect position and then it's carefully brought down and laid in position. It's a matter of patience. The crane has been specially configured for work on the express highway. The peak of this crane is a clear sign of how high the road will be elevated. More than seven meters above the ground. But for that to happen, a lot of hard work must have happened under the construction of piers. Start by targeted drilling. To make holes as far as a hundred feet deep. The process is called piling and is important for building a strong foundation. Cluster drilling technology is being employed. This is what is happening underground. Driving below the earth surface by compressed air, the beat pulverizes the underground rock mass into sand and gravel-sized pieces, a chisel effect. This happens as the operator rotates and pushes the drill further down. As drilling goes on, the cuttings rise above the drill and settles in a calyx basket. continuously once the beat is pulled out. The sustainability and durability of the express highway will depend on what is happening here. What we see is the magnificent piers and beams shaping the new road. But what we don't see is the majority of the foundation that support these structures. When a hole is done, workers insert a rectangular steel reinforcement cage The 
hall is then filled with concrete to form a pile. These columns made of concrete constructed deep into the ground to keep structures above strong and safe. It's upon which piers are being erected along the ride to the top. constructed strong enough to resist pressure like earthquakes. The column part of the piers is the first to be constructed. First, reinforcement cages are pulled to the construction site and then mounted. A steel mold is then placed around the cage. Its work is to hold concrete as it's placed into the reinforcement cage. Piers take the shape of the molds once they dry up. On the sidelines, Change is also underway. The current water system could soon become defunct. With a new infrastructure coming up, the old must now retire. The water system that ran parallel to the road is being dismantled to make room for the new one. These workers must fix a new line before road construction is completed. The new pipes are much better and more durable than those that are being decommissioned. Steels used to make these pipes can last for more than 75 years. For this crew, it's a matter of patience and precision. Interlocking these long and huge steel tubes require lots of concentration and coordination. They have applied a substance that aid pipes to slide into each other. But the key to everything here is precision placement. The excavators are operating at full throttle. Nothing is allowed to impede the construction of the express highway. Not even trees that have for long defined Nairobi's beauty. They are in fact dismantled with brute force. The past and the future lie virtually side by side. Just a few kilometers away, the Express Highway is shaping into what designers envisaged. It's just that some of these things, because they're in the city, they take a bit of time, but already now things are starting to move, because that's the way to go. Kenya loses over 50 million shillings daily from the delay and fuel wastage 
caused by traffic jams and accidents, especially in urban areas. This translates to an estimated loss of 18.25 billion shillings annually. It takes motorists between two to three hours to drive through Nairobi. The new highway is on right to the top that aims to decongest some of Nairobi's busiest arteries. Mombasa Road, Uhuru Highway and Wayaki Way. Traffic snarl-ups have been an ISO, but the arteries will have undergone tremendous change by the time the express highway is over. It will help those seeking to overpass the city center. People like Nicholas Ananda, a musician who stays in Kitengela and has to endure traffic jams along Mombasa Road on a daily basis. And I go by the name of Funkiz, F U N K E Z. Fanyo Kweli na Kwakilisha, every empowerment zone, ama every environment zone. Kenyamendelea, <laughs> We are doing what we can to make sure that the movement within the city is, all, is better managed. Several renovations have been done in the past on Mombasa, Uhuru and Wayaki highways. But the pressure of a growing city has been overwhelming. The construction of piers for the express highway is taking shape. For the road to maneuver through the Kenyan capital, these workers must construct six types of piers, each suited for the space available on the ground. These are single column piers, double column piers, Single column frame piers, double column frame piers, double column portal piers, and three column portal piers. The double column pier appear to be the most preferred on the construction site along Mombasa Road. This is where the lens below passes on the sides of the piers. But in some places, for example, around Bellevue, three column frame piers are constructed. This allows vehicles heading to the city center to pass under the express highway. Single column piers have also been erected in places where the space under is too limited. The construction of both the columns and main caps is taking place on the construction site. It's called cast in place technology. These workers are placing a rectangular reinforcement cage on top of columns. The cage is being suspended on a metallic reinforcement. It's an involving job taking place seven meters above the ground. They then build a steel mold around the cage.
mistakes are not allowed at this stage. If that happens, it will force these workers to start the process afresh. The shape and stability of the cup and the entire pier depends on these men and the work they are doing. Cajun place time to construct cups. This engineer and his team have one job only, to fill the cage with concrete. Without such machines, a construction project of this magnitude will never get off the ground. Along with the crane, it's key to the logistic chain. Concrete, metallic roads, water tanks, steel girders, tools and machinery. This machine lifts materials to the construction site at the peak while the crane and workers take over. It's a challenging task for the machine operator. He has to pay attention and compensate for it if need be. He has to make sure that he doesn't bump into another thing or let the wind push it into another thing. That is a risk. The crowded site is another challenge at Kenya's top construction site. As is the fact that motorists, cyclists and pedestrians will continue using the road under for the duration. Some stand to marvel at the engineering wonders. Some try to cross under the construction site. It's a risk and they must not allow that to happen. There are several holes on top of the cap and this team must ensure concrete spreads everywhere inside the reinforcement cage. There must be proper coordination between the team and the machine operator since he doesn't see where the lifted concrete goes once it hits the peak. Days later, the cab's concrete is dry and it's time for these site workers to remove the metallic mold. One by one, they remove every single part of the mold. It has to be done with utmost care. The next phase of construction will take place on piers. The prefabricated concrete beams are being installed. They are being made at the prefabrication yards in Nairobi West and Loretto Estate, and so they have to be delivered to construction sites by logistics specialists. They have come from a distance and still they have a long way to be fixed. The new road will use thousands of them. It's time to fix beams on piers, when at a time. It's easier said than done given its size and weight. It will take between 30 minutes and one hour for the construction workers to transfer a single concrete beam to the peak of the construction site. 
anchoring it on adjacent piers. Each of the beams or girders will be suspended on subsequent piers. The girder is hoisted by a specially designed crane suspended on ropes. At the same time, countless of trucks loaded with steel are making their way through construction sites along the road. Bulldozers and excavators are busy too. There are many construction sites along the new road from Lolongo all the way to James Gishuru Junction. More than 10 specialists are assembling the enormous road at Westlands. Work that requires a clear head at a great height. Soon, vehicles of all sizes will pass on top of it. Some will be speeding along the road at over 120 kilometers per hour. And the piers and gardas will have to bear weight exerted by moving vehicles. A special crane brings the garda into position. The crew is getting ready to hoist the 29.9 meter long garda into position. But it's a risky affair. To avoid accidents, the beam must be suspended on a crane by a strong rope that contains smaller metallic cables. They are designed to withstand the force of the weight they will be subjected to. Each gada weighs about 130 tons. Meter by meter, the beam is pulled into position. The crew must make sure the huge concrete component must not run into anything. Now they are on the touchline. The crew must ensure it settles in the designated place and not on top of the already laid beam. It's a tricky maneuver that requires skills and a clear head. The experts carefully bring the huge component into position. These crew members are masters of their craft. With a job this complicated, they have to be. Communication between various team members is key. Crew members on the crane can't see where the placement position is. That makes giving clear feedback and instructions more crucial. This engineer here has to measure and see if the beam is being placed properly and then issues instructions to the crane operator to lower it. If not, he instructs them to push it in the direction that places the beam right on top of the desired position. His colleague on the other side of the beam does same. The crane operator heavily relies on that. Anything short of it and it won't work. Eagle-eyed crew watch the operation. Slowly, they place the beam on the pier. Job done. Rope released. Time to move to the next concrete beam or garda. There are still thousands to go. Several months before the planned launch date, construction work is being accelerated. The girders are being installed from the head 
the end and the middle of the road. An army of workers are risking lives and limbs to create Kenya's modern road and several other link roads. Prefabricated guardrails will be installed on the edges of the road. The subgrade and pavements will then be compacted in layers. The express highway will be a critical thoroughfare for residents, businesses and visitors. A dual carriage that will run along the central reserve of the A8 road starting from Lulongo all the way to the James Gishuru road. From Lulongo to Next Gen Mall, the express highway is built in the same level with the existing A8 road. From there, it's elevated running all the way to James Gishuru. Work is underway at some of the 10 exchanges. Once completed, they are designed to help smooth entry and exit at major points along the road. But this road will not be free. Motorists will be required to pay a toll fee to use it. The construction is being made in such a manner to accommodate the bus rapid transit system, commonly called BRT. We, we decided to start the BRT when the express highway also is being done. So as we are doing the express highway, there was, you can go there and find there is a line now dedicated for BRT. So things are coming. They take time because of capital intensity, but also in terms of design complications. The Ministry of Transport maintains that this road will be worthwhile.